Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Malone Drinker Service Haunt and Soft Show, where we cover everything on the diamond with the West Green baseball and softball teams. As always, I'm joined here with head baseball coach Adrian Saucman and head softball coach Clinton Hahn. Coach, how are we doing today? You're on the heater, buddy. <laughs> I know. I'm doing my best. I got to focus. Take him to Vegas, Hahn. Huh? I'm starting to get a little bit of a pressure now that you're mentioning it every time, so I got to lock in. How are we doing today? Pretty good. Is it going to rain today or not? Probably. It's baseball season. Probably. I mean, the sun keeps coming out and keeps hiding behind these clouds. They're a little dark. I don't know whether to wear a windbreaker, wear a rain jacket, or wear no jacket. Well, that if you want to get on the uh, field over there, everybody bring some boots. But I like to do. But yeah. Had about three inches of water out in the left field there earlier today. So the drain was clogged up. <clears throat> Unclog it. Is that always fun? Oh, yeah. I ain't went down there to look at mine. <laughs> it's, it's pretty saturated. We got a nice backdrop today. Yeah, got the old buffalo here, and you might notice that it's caged in. That is not for the uh, buffalo's protection. That is protect the other people. And that buffalo, he can get a little rowdy, rowdy sometimes. You got to keep him caged in. I think you might have the record for. Uh different settings that we've done a show at. I like it. Done one out here, done one down there. We've done the softball field. We've done the Still press box. On the driver's head car. we got to get that. Sometime. Maybe next week. Yeah. Maybe week after. Because you don't know. Yeah. It might still be playing. Yeah. It might still have a substate show. Hope so. But before we get to that, let's talk about how you got to the regional tournament and what you did to get there. First time in 52 years you are able to win the conference tournament. How great of a feeling was that to bring the first one to West Green High School? It's pretty awesome. Um, I'm just proud of the boys, man. It, it's, it's an awesome thing for them and uh, something to take, take pride in the rest of their lives, you know. And, uh, it, I mean, it's still, it's been a couple days. It's still kind of hard to describe everything, I guess, but uh, Has it even, of course we're still playing yeah. too, so it, it's not. Has it even soaked in yet? I mean, it, it's when our season's over, it will. Mm -hmm. You know, right, right now we're still, we got things we're, we're worried about here for uh, regional round and all that stuff. So you know, it's it's an honor to be playing in that, you know. Of course, that's where our main focus is right now. But sometime or another, we'll look back on everything. I think it'll be awesome to think about. So. It's cool for you as a head coach. It's cool for Adam as an assistant coach. It's cool for those seniors and even the juniors, sophomores and freshmen to be able to say they were a part of a team that was the first. Because yeah. being a part of anything that's a first, you always remember the first of everything. Yeah, that's, that's something they can look back on the rest of their lives and they can take some pride in, and I, I think it's just an awesome thing. And it's, I, I'm, I'm happy for them, too, because it's been a great bunch. It's, it's probably been my favorite bunch to coach all year. And, you know, even if we were 0 and 30, I feel like this would still be the same bunch that's, that's fun to coach, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, just a bunch of good kids. And they like to work. I like that. You look a little different, too. I might, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they can see it. Yeah. Give him a liter of cola. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a lot of mixed reviews about it the last, year, last couple of days here, but we've we made a bet back in the off season that if uh, we win the district championship that i got to shave my beard. And, you know, I've, I've always had a beard of some sorts. Uh, i got to shave that and leave a mustache. My mustache is not my strong point. You know, I think they knew that, and I think they, they wanted to see that, I guess. So um, here it is. Everybody aspires to be Coach Bard and have the stash that he does, but yeah. not everybody can pull it off. No, no, but. He gets a lot of free promo on this show. I never realized how much yeah, he, he does. he really does. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's just another cool thing, though. Uh, just something that we'll have to remember. Um, so I didn't, I mean, obviously they brought it up as soon as we won. That was like the first thing they said. Um, but I didn't tell them that I'd actually done it. Mm -hmm. I waited until, uh, I guess, Wednesday morning. And I think Jonan and uh, Eli Brown were the first two to come down the steps and see me, and they just started dying laughing. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. It's been a good thing. It's been fun. So, Was it, it if you won the district tournament that you would shave it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I've told them, too, we, we advanced to the next round. I'll, I'll reshave it again. Go clean shaving? Well, I'll, I'll reshave it. How about go to state? You'll go clean shaving. Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, if you win the district 
tournament next year. You gonna shave all that off? Stash uh, only? I might let them die. I ain't shaving the beard. Die it. Yeah, I might let them die everything, but. One of them said but, something about dying his blonde. That's a tradition if you go to the state tournament. Yeah, you dye your hair is. blonde. Yeah. Would you do that for the, I don't know if as a coach it would look right. Yeah, that, that's more of a player yeah. kind of thing. You go clean shaven and they go blonde. Sure. See, All if right. I go clean shaven, I look like my mama. <laughs> You saying that's a bad thing? No. <laughs> no I think, I think lady, she's a beautiful huh? lady, but yeah. I don't think she's a good looking guy. <laughs> All right, Paul. I mean, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the district tournament a little bit also. I know you got practice here in a bit, so we'll go ahead and knock your part out here in the first half with the district tournament and the championship and then moving on to regionals, if they can hear us. I know the wind's pretty strong out here today, but take us through the district tournament. You started off as three seed. We talked about the win over Hampton last week. And then you move into games with Chucky Doak and South Green. So just take me through the whole entire tournament and how fun it was this year. Uh, yeah, so we opened up with Hampton. Uh, and that was kind of stressful going in because it's a single elimination game. And, and you lose that game, you don't have none of this mm -hmm. stuff that's happened since. So and we started out with Mason in that game. We felt like we had to. Uh, not because we didn't trust in our other guys. Saved us from having to pitch another game. Yeah. Anytime you do that in a tournament, it's huge. Um, so then we go out to Chucky Doak the next day, and that was that was a game that we'd had circled for a while. Just how these the two games in the season had played out, kind of leave a bitter taste in your mouth, you know. So uh, you know, we come out and um, played well. The boys were certainly uh, motivated for that game. Um, I know for them it had to feel nice too to give them a reverse sweep in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was that was Braden versus Darius. That's a big time pitching matchup out there too. Which, judging by the score, you wouldn't think that. No. Um, you know, it, it kind of started off a little crazy there, but uh, you know, it was big to get that win though, and I know that meant a lot to them. And then, um, and then we come the next day, you come back here, and we got South Green in the winter bracket final. Win that, and you're in. Um, Fifth inning, fourth inning, whichever one it was, I think we gave up four or five runs, and you know had a couple of balls that we just misplayed a little bit, and uh, yeah, one thing or another, they just they had a big inning. Crumb um, through that game for them, he threw really well. Mason come back and he pitched that game for us. And, you know we were hoping to get about 50 to 60 pitches out of him because he just thrown 50 two days prior. And that dude goes out and he throws like 90 some, and I, I kept. Once he got to about 30, every every, any, every half inning we came back in, I was talking to him, trying to make sure he was okay, wasn't feeling any fatigue, any soreness, anything like that. And he just kept saying, give me the ball, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And he just finally, I think it was the sixth inning, just kind of run out of fifth inning, whatever it was, kind of just run out of gas a little bit. And man, it was a heck of an effort by him. Uh, and then we ended up losing that game. Uh, I don't remember what the score was. Lost about three or four, I think. And then, now you're in a position that you got a your elimination game again against Chucky Doak. And then you got to win three straight to win the tournament. Sure. Um, we got Chucky Doak that game. And man, for six innings, that didn't look good. We were down, what, two to nothing? One, one to nothing. We were yeah. down one nothing. Yeah. Um, Connor, you know, we're at that point in our, our pitching rotation, we're down to Connor, Judd. As you tell Connery, we got to get everything we can get out of him. The dude goes out and gives seven, seven innings. Complete game. Uh, I think he scattered five or six hits, something like that. Struck out four. But it's 1 0 going into the seventh, and um, we, we piece a couple balls together pretty good there. And, um, you know, and from there, uh, Gavin there, he, he threw a great game that game, too. Connor actually came and led that seventh inning off the double. He, well, actually, Carp. Carp hit one in the hole that uh, shortstop Cutshaw, I guess, made a great play on. Yes. Lead yeah, off out, out. And, and then Connor come up and hit the double. Uh, but yeah, we, we ended up scoring three in that inning. Um, huge to get that. 
uh, you know the, the one was huge because it, it it keeps you going yeah but those getting those two insurance runs right there were massive uh, and then we come in and I think they get one and, and, and then we got runner on first we got Derry up to bat and that's your offensive player of the year holy cow <laughs> you know that kid what a moment that was um, and especially where we're playing here and I, you pull one down the line it's, that's something he did the second, the first time they'd played there earlier. One swing of the bat, and that could have been the end of our season yeah. right there. So, you know, my mind, and it probably only lasted about 10 seconds, but I swear I went back and forth about 300 times. <laughs> walking, pitch to him, walking, pitch to him. But I finally just went with my gut and said, we're going to trust our guys, man. And, uh, and, and Connor came through, and he got him to roll over the short, and uh, just, just an awesome thing. So that sent us through the regional game, and then, uh, of course, you didn't have to – my job was easy at that point. I didn't have to do anything to motivate him. You know, it was already there. So, you know, we played the championship game one against South Green. And we're still in the same position pitch-wise. You've still got either one or two games to play for, and you got two pitchers remaining, really. And and Judd goes out and gives us seven innings. It's awesome. Big for moment him. for him, too, as a senior. It's huge, huge. And I, I told him the night before, I texted him, I would said that you know, Connor's going to start the game against Chucky Doke. I said, if if we had to bring in relief, I want it to be you in a big time clutch situation. We didn't need it in that game, but we needed it in the next game. And man, he certainly delivered. And uh, big for him also, because correct me if I'm wrong, if I remember, did he pitch game yeah. one against Johnson County in last year's championship yeah. on that Threw Saturday up there at Happy Valley? Yeah, it was a good game. So good for him to get that opportunity to pitch game one of the championship again and correct. Not really correct that wrong last year, yeah. but to get that win back. Well, he was also the pitcher when South Green beat us here in the regular season, okay. too. So he was a starting pitcher then. Yeah, he threw great. And then uh, and we had the one really big inning. I was thinking he scored nine in that inning. Uh, a lot of small ball. Uh, finally executed that. That's, that's been driving me nuts all year. But, man, <laughs> we've the last few games, we've kind of dialed it in a little bit. It's been great for us. Uh, and it, it can really flip a ball game, too. And then, you know, I think we go bunt, 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 grand slam. So, you know, that's exactly how it is in the playbook. You know, it's, we, we call number one, and that's what it is, bunt, 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 grand slam. It'd be nice if it was like that. It was yeah. that easy. Yeah, but uh, it, was, it was huge for Mason right there because that, that put it from 5-2 to 9-2. And we needed that because, you know, South Korea ended up scoring five. And you know, I think he had a two- or three-run double. And, uh, so that's big to get that. And then we go out Monday nights. Uh, and at that point, we've got Carp, and then we've got two guys, well, three three guys, really, that have a combined one and two-thirds inning on the year. So we're kind of looking at Carp, like, hey, you got to go, big boy. <laughs> uh, and he had thrown about 11 innings on the year, and he comes out and gives us four fantastic innings. Uh, and, then, of course, that's the time that we go into delay and all that stuff. And uh, we're in the midst of an inning right there when we'd scored six at that point, and then – Anyways, the Carry next it day, over Braden, Tuesday, you Braden opens up with a triple. One more. Yeah, he opens up the triple to score Mason. And, uh, where where did he hit the triple at? Right field. That was, What's funny is we're sitting at lunch. He said, what do you think I need to do? I said, I said well, I'll try to find your pitch go right center. <laughs> he, he was more down the line, but, yeah, he, he must have took your advice there. So uh, we got That's that. And then, the uh, year, <laughs> yeah, and then – of course, we got Braden back at that point. He comes out. Their first three batters all roll over to Mason on third. Mason, two of the plays were pretty easy. But man, the first one, he had to come in on, pick up, bare hand, go. It was a heck of a play. I knew right there. I was like, man, this is us. We got it. Um, the next two wins, we go through. <laughs> Maddox Carver back there. Getting ready for practice. First one in again? No, it was a couple of them. Oh, we got beat today. Well. He's the first one to come in out of the school building. Had a couple of, got a different schedule, I guess. But it was awesome, though, you know, to go through that whole experience. I think six games, winning five of them. Uh, you know, Mason the fact was, that you had to play six games to win the tournament is also remarkable because yeah. that's something that I think you'll always remember the tournament by is that you had to win six games, or you had to play six, win five, and win three straight to even be able to own that plaque. And, and five great pitching performances. But 
six from five different guys. Yeah, uh, it's just you couldn't ask for more. And we we knew all year long that you know pitching was a strength for us, and, and our depth was a factor. And uh, man, it certainly came true in the district tournament here. You know, we without those guys pitching the way they did, we couldn't have done. Now you move on to regionals, you'll go up there to Pigeon Forge. Unfortunately for you all, you kind of got the short end of the stick with Alcoa. I don't know who you would have rather played, but Alcoa being one of the top ranked teams in state and the favorite to win that tournament, they ended up finishing runner up to Pigeon Forge as they had a comeback win in that game. So you've got Alcoa now, one of the top teams in the state in the regional tournament now going into the round one. And it's the same thing we mentioned last year. I mentioned it once this week, and I'll mention it again. I'll steal the quote from Jason Lowe, but I don't know if you still or if he steals a quote from you because you've got it up on the board in there. Win two before you lose two. Win two before you lose two. That's the big thing. And, like you get this time of year, there's only 32 of us left out of 85 in double A. So it's it's an honor and a privilege to be at this point. Anybody that you play is going to be good. So Alcoa or Pigeon Forge, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're all. They're all good. Yeah, we're good too. You know, that's that's the mindset we've got going into it. Um, one of the ten interviews I've done in the last few days, I've, I feel like a popular man right mm -hmm. now. It's kind of weird. Um, stash. Yeah, it must be the stash. That's right. It's gravitates. They, um, you know, they were talking about it a little bit. And, uh, I don't forget what I was going to say. Now you know, got me messed. I'm trying to think. I forgot what I was about to say. I had something really good and I lost it. 21 and 9 at the moment? Yeah. I was trying to think back. How many wins did the 2018 team? 22. 22. Yeah. So you're one win away from tying that record for most in school history, two to break it. Still got that opportunity ahead, but you've got the regional tournament coming up. I understand you've got practice soon too, so I'll go ahead and let you get to that. But before you go, Malone's record, do we have a tagline this week? That dude, he's been about four or five of our games in the last two weeks. It's tournament time. He comes out there. He's I got guess. the magic touch. Yeah. He comes around and you win ball games. Well, now he he's talking about coming down there tomorrow too. I don't know if he is. Um, of course, we get we, we play Saturday either way too. Okay. So if you have an accident on the way up there, <laughs> if you do, I hope you don't. But if you do, call Malone. We're going through a very heavily trafficked area. Should be crazy getting out there. Yeah. Wanted to touch on your all conference members, all tournament members, and awards too. But if you wanted to save that till next week. We can. I know you're running out of time. Don't matter. I'd, they should be getting out there and start stretching any time. Um, Braden McCamey was the MVP of the district. Um, deservedly so. I mean, well deserved for him. Gosh, he's had a great year. Um, I think right now on the mound he's 8-1 and one with a save. 80-some strikeouts. Uh, in about 60 innings. And about a over a two VRA um, at the plate. He's in about 415, 420. Love to see his OBP. One thing I've always he was bragged up about, right about Braden. 600. One thing I've always bragged about Braden is it seems like just watching him play the very few times that I've seen the past few years, he probably has one of the better, if not the best, eyes that I've seen throughout the county and throughout this area. He's he's got a great approach at the plate, and that certainly helps. Um, yeah, he he knows. He knows where the strike zone is. So that's one of them things like, I don't know how many times he's been rung up looking this year. It can't be more than two or three, but if he gets a rung up looking, it's a bad call. You know, he's just, there's not many guys, especially high schoolers, that you can say that about, but I, I definitely think it's true with him. I mean, it's rare too. A lot of times you see maybe six or seven pitch walks, but you've seen four pitch walks from him before just because he has a great eye for the ball and where it's going to be located near the strike zone. Yes, yeah, so he's got 110 plate appearances over 30 games and a 518 OBP. It's pretty good. Connors is 515 and Judd's is 534. That's a big part of our success this year. That is. Uh, not only with the pitching, but especially the way uh, Mason's is 474. Jones is 433, so that's the top five or six in the lineup right there. Makes a huge difference. And all those guys can run a little bit, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, we've got we've got over 100 stolen bases this year. Uh, yeah, so we got Braden MVP. Uh, Judd and Mason were first team all district. Uh, Jonan and Connor were second team. And then for the all tournament team for the district tournament right there, we had um, 
Mason was the MVP, I know that. And in, in the six games, he hit 600. Wow. He had like 13 hits, um, six doubles, one the, the grand slam. I mean, it was just an absurd line. And he had the pitching numbers, too, because yeah. he pitched in two games. Uh, Mason was the MVP. Braden, Judd, and Connor were our other alternate selections there. But, I mean, gosh, he, it's, that's, that's a big poppy line right there. Mm -hmm. you know? That year he hit like 700 in the World Series. Series 2013. Yeah. That was, it was good. That was fun. And then, uh, of course, we're – thing we've been talking about, man, we didn't come this far to come this far. So. We'll see what we can do in the regional round. A lot of work left to be done. I know you play tomorrow, and uh, I didn't warn you again, but this is going to be uploaded before the Alcoa game, but I don't think you gave out too much information. Same as last week. You're going to put somebody on the mound, and you're going to put eight people around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, Coach, I believe that's all we've got. Have good practice today. Appreciate it. Congratulations on the first district tournament moving on to regionals. You've been quiet this round. We've got a lot to talk about next round, though. We'll go ahead and cut into break before we discuss that, though. So we'll get a word from our sponsors in. We'll talk to Coach Hahn in the second half right after this break here on Grassroots Media. For more than 30 years, Tommy's Plumbing has served customers in East Tennessee with licensed and professional plumbing services. From installing your new faucet to replacing your existing piping system, our team at Tommy's Plumbing is trained to handle the job with professionalism, attention to detail, and integrity. By offering warranties on most products installed by our technicians, Tommy's Plumbing stands behind our work, ensuring that your plumbing needs are not only met, but that your problem is solved for the long term. When you need reliable and professional plumbing service, Tommy's is the only call to make. So give us a call today and let us show you the Tommy's difference. At Corner Pond, the friendly and knowledgeable staff has the experience necessary to help you out regardless the need. Have an item of value you'd like to pawn or sell? Corner Pond can help. They pawn numerous items of value, including firearms, tools, ammunition, silver, coins, and much more. When you walk through their doors, you'll find well-stocked shelves full of electronics, gaming systems, fishing and hunting equipment, car audio and accessories. And don't forget about the room full of guitars and basses and amplifiers, or their outside lawn and garden equipment. Corner Pond is a case knife dealer and carries numerous used knives as well. Stop by and let the friendly staff at Corner Pond help you today at 432 East Bernard Avenue, Greenville, Tennessee. Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Malone Trekker Service Haunt and Soft Show, where we cover everything on the diamond with the West Green, and base, West Green baseball and softball teams. Usually we're here with both head coaches. We're just here with West Green softball head coach Clinton Hahn now. Coach, how we doing? Pretty good. A little sunny now. A little sunny. Sun's back out now. I mentioned at the beginning of the show, if people watch that part, don't know where, whether the sun wants to stay out or creep behind the clouds, whether it wants to rain or not. We look straight ahead. Clouds look white and puffy, and you look over here, and it looks like it's about to cry. A little darker over there. A little brighter back there. Yeah. Oh. A little brighter behind us right now, so it probably looks like a nice backdrop behind us with the buffalo. You got the you got a nickname for the buffalo? No. I don't know if anybody gave it a nickname yet. It's been out here for about how long's it been now? I think this is year two. I thought so. I wanted I think to think two. I think we got it last year at the beginning, of the start of the school year last year. Ralphie always comes to mind, but I don't want to steal Colorado's. Yeah, we can't do that. You can't do that. No, we might just call it the Tonka. The Tonka, okay. I like Coach. that word. Yeah, got a jersey yeah. for too. Coach, let's talk about the tournament a little bit. Played the District 1 2A tournament this past week. Uh, started off with Happy Valley, and what a game that was. 19 18 final joked about it with you in the break and I joked about it with a few other people that might have been the most combined runs I've ever seen yeah in a baseball or softball game 37 and you come out with the win in walk-off fashion how exciting was that uh well it was exciting to get the win but more importantly it was exciting to see the girls not quit and lay down when we come in, in down 8-0 and not even got the bat yet it could have been real easy to hang our heads 
Uh, but they came in, battled, we put up five. Um, and they go back out. I think they scored three. So come in back in, we're down 11 5. Then we put up six to tie it up going into the third. So, I mean, that was a bright spot to see us go from something like that last year. We could easily lay her head. Ball game could have got ugly to the fact that we uh, are able to fight through some adversity and uh, especially having a fairly young team when it comes to age. Uh, I think now we're, we're a little bit more experienced. I mean, of course, all three sophomores started last year as freshmen. Mm -hmm. Junior started as sophomores last year. So, I mean, we've got some games under our belt. So, I mean, they're – but to see them fight through the adversity, which they, they fought through adversity most of the season. And uh, about, about every win we had, there was some sort of adversity we had to fight through. And to uh, – in years past, we could have just hung our head. But to be able to push through that is is very, very exciting for the future. And then you moved into that game with South Green too, which unfortunately ended up causing you to be eliminated from playoff contention and ended your season with a 12 to six loss to the Lady Rebels, but a very competitive game against them. I know at one point you would drew it back into, I think a two run game after falling behind by a pretty significant margin. So talk about the fight you saw in your girls and how happy you were to see them claw back from another tough deficit early in the game. Uh, again, I mean, we're down 7-0, and to be able to uh, to come in and not quit, I mean, it's – and South Green's – I mean, they're one the better, they was the number one seed in our conference. So, I mean, you're seeing with the best team in your conference at that time. So, I mean, it could be easy to be down 7-0 and, and lay down, which we had some uncharacteristic players that game. Uh, but we – just the grit that these girls have to be able to, even against one of the better teams, go scratch out five runs in one inning. Home uh, run. Home run. Addie, uh, I, I told her before before she went up her at bat, she's getting ready to go because they had a. Amy went out there to talk to talk to the team. I told her I said, "Don't over." I said, "Get your bottom hand to it," and I said, "See the ball hit the bat." And. Uh, she had everything. That's probably the best swing she's had all year. Everything was in line. She she got her hands to it. And it came off the bat. My first words was get out ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, she hit it. Uh, just the look on her face when she was around the second coming to third was, it's just like, oh crap, that actually happened. But to uh, see the excitement, uh, we stayed up for a while on that and then uh, come back in next inning. I think the next inning we scored one. Um, had a base running error that uh, kind of cost us. But I think I think for the bright spot about it is the bright spot we learned from it for the future. So hopefully that – but the way they battled the whole, the whole game, I mean, put the bat on the ball. I think we only had two strikeouts. Um, there in tournament time, I think we ended up with, I think it was like 26 hits in two games. So that's, that's not bad. Um, I mean, it sucks not. It sucks seeing Sauce going to practice. I'm getting ready to go home. Uh, it's probably, Probably one of my favorite groups to coach. I got tickled. Coach Monroe asked me the other day, he said, would you rather coach guys or the girls? And I didn't miss a beat, and I said, these girls. I don't know if he liked that answer, but this is a fun group to have. Uh, I'm going to miss them, especially the two seniors. Uh, well, this has done for us the past two years. She. Uh, I can't remember. I mean, she pitched some innings this year. Uh, with, uh, she pitched 37 innings, start and relief for us. Saved a lot of wear and tear on Mo. Uh, and from where she is at from the beginning till the end, 
Uh, her strike numbers went up. And uh, like I tried to tell her, throw strikes such a defense work. I was like, we can't, we can't get them out if we walk them. Let them put it in play, then we got a chance to get them out. Uh, she started doing a lot better job of that towards the end of the year. Uh, of course, uh, Savannah, she uh, she done something to her foot and wasn't able to play the last half of the season. Uh, those two seniors, I told them uh, they definitely left the uh, program better than they found it. Which, I mean, eight wins. I can't tell you how many wins we've had. That's about how many wins we've had combined since so, I mean, seven, eight years in that span. Uh, it's good to, uh, especially getting nine of your starters back coming back next year. So, like I told them, I said, the sky's the limit. Uh, you're all ready to get back to work. Looks like you're – Everybody's blowing away. Everybody's blowing away. I'm hoping they can hear us right now. That wind's kind of – Yeah. Scaring me. It, the good thing is it's blowing this way on us, so it's not right at the mic. Uh, but – no, nah, this was a good group to coach. I got tickled uh, Monday in the Happy Valley game. We got to the point where we was down two going into the set, bottom of the seventh. Um, my seven and eight, eight hole both got on. Owens, I think she had like a 3-1 count and got hit. And of course, where I have her as a DP, and I got Mallory Lawson's flex, she plays the field. So I sub Mallory into to run for her. and then uh, Addie got on, and then I subbed uh, Autumn Carter in to run for her, and uh, both of them are freshmen running the base pass, so, I mean, you kind of worry about, are they going to make a mistake mm -hmm. or something like that, get out, uh, but now, there was one, it was a, it was a ball in the dirt, Mallory read it pretty, right, pretty much out of her hand. And uh, got the third, so we got the second and third. And then uh, we had uh, Chloe Reams, which is uh, AKA Eeyore. <laughs> uh, she hit the ball well all night Monday. Um, she hit a ball on the left center gap. And uh, we scored and it was a walk off. And everybody's excited and she's standing on second base. I don't think she realized the game was over. <laughs> but she was ready for the next batter to yeah. come up and run the bases. She didn't realize it was a walk-off? No. <laughs> Which might have been a good thing, because she didn't realize it was a walk-off, it might put more pressure on her. <laughs> She's just going up there and see ball and hit ball. Uh, but all no, these girls, top to bottom, they improved all year. Uh, especially uh, Aubrey Ever, I had her lead off. When I told her back in the winter time, I was like, you're going to be batting leadoff this year. She kind of looked at me like, you really want me batting leadoff? Um, but I like, I think it was like 60, 65 at bats. I think she had 20 of them that was like plus seven pitches. And I mean, batted just south of 300, but her own base percentage was about 380. Uh, and of course, and Alyssa came in the two hole. She got hot there towards the end of the year. Right before Tiny Day, I think she was at around, it was a low, about mid 100s. And uh, I was actually debating on moving her down. And then she finally started sparking up and, uh, and uh, hitting the ball and ended up batting over 300 for the year. I think she had uh, 17 stolen bases. So her being able to get on base. I mean, she can turn a walk from a, a single to a triple real easy. Yeah. And then, of course, you had Mo coming in, coming back from her knee injury last year in basketball to come back. And uh, the bat, she batted right over 300, on base percentage about four something. And then, uh, which, and then you got Haley Arnold batting fourth. If she'd have got one more at bat, and got a hit, she'd about a 500 for the season. And if you go ask her how she felt like she hit the ball this year, she would tell you she hit terrible. Anytime you can bat 500, close to 500 for a season, it's, I don't care what, you hit the ball pretty well. 
I mean, seven, seven doubles, five triples, a home run and 25 RBIs. That's not a shabby season, but you asked her, she said she played, she did terrible the second half of the year. You want in on this? No. Guest appearance. <laughs> Guest, come here. No. Front and center. Show. No. Come here, guest appearance. No. Right here. Come right here and see it. You can be the host now. But no, uh, I mean, pretty much be one hit shot batting 500. I thought she played great. Um, she actually, there have been a couple games she got to some five balls in the outfield that other coaches literally had asked me how she got there. Was it unique a Thursday? Girl hit a line drive right in the gap. Coach, had, they had a runner on third. He sent her, and uh, she tracks it down. And we get in the inning, I go over. He's like, how'd she get to that? I said, I don't, I don't know how she does it, but she, she gets to him. Um, and then uh, you had Cutshaw biting fifth. She batted a couple points below 400 and had 20 RBIs. So, I mean, you got 40 RBIs right there in the – four and five spot. So your top three is doing their job of getting on base and they're doing their job of moving them around. And then uh, you got Kaylee Willett coming in, batting sixth. She, uh, she's, she's quiet, but she's a warrior. She battled through some uh, arm injuries, uh, hurt knee, never would tell me. I'd ask her if she's all right, yeah, I'm fine. But then you go look at her after the game, she's got arm taped up. Ice packs. I, I mean, it's just, she, she's a warrior. And then you got uh, Owens coming in batting seventh as a freshman. She uh, she hit the ball well, especially, she done a great job adjusting from the middle school to the high school game. And uh, of course, then you have uh, Addison Peters. She came in, she hit the ball a lot better than she did last year. And like I told her, her biggest thing, I said, when you put the ball in play, you get on base a lot more. I said, but you got to see the ball and trust your hands. And there towards later, a part of the year, she started doing that a little bit better. And then she hit that one out of South Green. And then oh, Eeyore. What can I say? She's Eeyore. <laughs> Transition from outfield to first base. I thought she'd done a heck of a job at first base. Um, and you got Mallory Lawson out there who, as an outfielder, improved every game. Um, so you look at going into next year, you get you get the whole outfield back. We pretty much can move people around and have the whole infield back with pitching back. So, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, I know the girls are ready to get back to work for next year. Uh, Allie's ready for us to get back to work, aren't you, Allie? Uh, she tells me all the time, our field down there don't look like Daddy's field. Does that field it? looks a lot prettier, doesn't it? That it does. Looks pretty. Well, it's got a lot more grass. Ours is just a dirty infield. <laughs> Allie, how are you doing today? Good. It's good to have you on the show. I'm sure your dad's glad that you're on his show first, other than Uncle Dalty's show, right? How's your week been? Good. School's winding down now. What grade are you in? Kindergarten. You're in kindergarten. Did you enjoy kindergarten? Yes. Kindergarten is the most fun grade. Coach Hahn, would you have to agree? Yeah. They don't yeah. Get to take naps anymore. They don't get to take naps anymore? I take it back. It's probably not the most fun anymore. Hey, kindergarten was fun when we was in kindergarten. It was. <laughs> That's all we did. You get to take naps and you wake up and you get popsicles. Yeah. That was awesome. I mean, what better good one could you ask for? Y'all get popsicles? You can watch movies sometimes, though, don't you? Yes. Y'all get snacks? Yes. What's your favorite snack? Everything. Everything? Oh. Sound like not, your daddy. Not picky, though. That's good. Hey, you don't eat the green Skittles, though, do you? No green Skittles. That's the best kind. Smart woman. I can tell you your daddy's daughter. <laughs> well, Allie, it was good having you on. But, Coach, you got... A lot of all-conference members that we need to talk about, too. I know you've got all-conference. We would talk about all-tournament, but all-tournament hasn't been released yet since the tournament will be completed tomorrow night. This will be released on Thursday. 
the championship between South Green and Johnson County has been moved to Friday night. So talk about your all-conference members and your awards. I know uh, you've got one that you might not like to talk about, but if you don't kind of run into it, then you know I will. So go ahead and jump into those and talk about your all-conference award members. Uh, our, for, our first team uh, all-conference was, uh, of course, Haley. Uh, she done a fantastic job this year. Uh, coming in leading, kind of leading the outfield. Uh, then you got uh, Cutshaw was all conference. Uh, Alyssa and Morgan was all first team. And then uh, second team was uh, Aubrey Everett, uh, Amanda Owens, and Kaylee Willett. Which in you got Chloe and Addison are right there. Both of them could easily have been in there in that same conversation. Um, but uh, any of those nine could have been about anywhere in that whole conversation. So, I mean, I'm proud of how they played this year to uh, go from not having a win last year to winning eight this year, finishing five and five in the district, getting to host the district game. Tournament game. Winning the district tournament game. Winning the district tournament game. Finally got that monkey off her back. Um, going and competing for a couple. Of, I mean, we competed the whole game. We just the outcome didn't kind of go our way. Most of them. Well, Jamie does a great job with those girls out there. Uh, they play hard. Um, they're smart on the base path. Uh, they definitely take advantage of your mistakes. And that, that's what you got to do to win games. And, I mean, winning eight games, getting to host a district tournament game, winning a district tournament game, getting all those monkeys off your back, I know that felt – that had to feel good for you to be able to add all of those to your coaching resume. And something else that you can add to your coaching resume now is district coach of the year. I know you were awarded with that. It's something that's well-deserved going from zero wins the last few seasons to getting eight this year. Complete turnaround for the program, too. How honored are you to be able to be named Coach of the Year? Uh, my name's just attached to it. That's the girls' award. Um, the only thing I get to do is fuss and yell at them. Uh, get to enjoy seeing them uh, succeed, especially in stuff that they struggled last year, early in the year, and come back and start succeeding at that spot, some of that stuff. Um, Seeing the girls, we had two walk-off wins. Uh, so seeing them, their excitement, their excitement with winning. I've said it for I don't know how long. They just ever just learn how to win. They could win. And they did just that. Uh, so I hope it carries over. And like I mean, my name is on it, but that's that's their award. How awesome is that? You get to bust that up for a living, and you get a plaque for this. This is coach of the year. We have to get our own. I ain't, I ain't buying. <laughs> Let's go into some live conversations, Zodi, in this interview. I know at the end of the year, it's always difficult to finally swallow that pill and understand your season's over. But at the end of the year, you always reflect on it and reflect back to some of the good moments throughout the season. I kind of want to do that and go through some of your favorite moments. So, what were some of your favorite moments throughout the season, whether they be in a game, within practice, doesn't necessarily have to be on the playing field. What were some of your favorite moments? Uh. Probably one of my favorite moments is it happened during practice. Is uh, Eeyore was going to throw a ball back home and she tripped over first base. <laughs> and anytime she falls, whoever, whether she sees me or Coach Garver, Ricky, she's always, she always like yells one of her names on the way out, like, like we're going to be able to run over and catch her. And she's usually about 60, 70 feet away from her. And you hear her, it's just, and she falls so gracefully. I mean, it's just like she just hit, just kind of just sat down while she's just slow motion looking at you like, you're not going to catch me. Uh, that's always, I'll never forget that. And uh, Arnold's home run against uh, Sullivan East. I got to take after she hit it, she came back over, she asked us after the game, she's like, that barely go out, and I said, I looked at her, I said, that had been out anywhere we played, but I mean, she hit it well. Um, another one, uh, Autumn Carter coming in as a 
pinch hitter during the North Green game on Tiny Day. Uh, kind of walk off single. Uh, there's so many, it's just. I want to lead into this conversation too. I know that you mentioned some of those games that I feel like might be an easy choice for this question, but what were some of your favorite games? I don't just want to pinpoint just one favorite game you had. What were some of your favorite games that you had throughout the season? Uh, our first check you up when we got the first win of the season. That one's always going to be special. Uh, just seeing how they battled. Uh, Arnold going four for four with Three triples, six RBIs. That's always stuff that kind of sticks out. Um, uh, the North Green game with Tiny Day, seeing them battle the whole time, having having a freshman come in, and that kind of pressure situation that uh, she's so nervous she forgets her armband going up the yeah. bat. And we have a first and second situation, I mean, first first and third situation. So I'm wanting her to take the first pitch because they had the infield in, so we get second and third. And uh, for her to come in and hit that, and uh, that's, I'll, I'll remember that for a long time. Um, seeing Arnold and Addie both get the first home runs. That's that's stuff that you really don't you won't forget. I kind of led into my next question. Is going to be some of your favorite memories you've had throughout the season. I think that kind of parlays into that as some of your favorite memories. Well, one of the, the biggest things that I was always it ain't really during the season. It's during the off season. Last year, is, we'd have 11 or 12 girls here, summer workouts. Had about the same number, if not more, during winter workouts before we're going into the season. So seeing them put that work in in the off season and being able to see those results during the season, that's – it makes it – Enjoyable knowing that they put the work in and they got to see the results from it. So those are always like memorable moments coming through with that. Is when you see them, especially young kids, putting that work in and then being able to reap the benefits from doing all that. Especially like, well, why are we doing all this? We, we didn't win a game last year. But them buying in and coming in and putting the work in, and then one last question I have too that I want to end off on is what's one thing that you always remember about this team? Whether it be their grit, their heart, their determination, is there a single characteristic or single word that you can describe this team that you always remember them by? There's about 50 words going through my head right now. <laughs> uh, There's a bunch of words you can describe them. Just a fun team to coach. Warriors. Um, cut ups. That I mean, every one of them. Either it was me, uh, Ricky, or heck, they'd even put a uh, eye black on Jacob, our manager. I bought him a, a little buffalo zone. hat. He was in the zone too. And I always told him, he'd, uh, I was like, Jacob, you can't take that thing off during the game. We'd look over at Happy Valley game Monday, he'd have it off, they'd score two or three runs. Well, some of the parents would tell him, Jacob, put the hat back on. <laughs> well, he'd put it back on. He'd get a little hot, he'd take it back off. They'd end up doing something good. Parents, Jacob, put the hat back on. <laughs> So I told him, told him, I said, Sal, I was going to choose the South Green. I said, Jacob, I said, you can't take that hat off. I said, you got to keep it on the whole time. All right, Coach Allen. And uh, he, uh, 
walked out to it after the game, come up there and she said, I saw him take that hat off two or three times. <laughs> so I like aggravating old Jacob, but nah, it's, this is a, it's probably one of the fun, I've, I've coached football for 17 years, wrestling for 16, baseball thing for four, three, four, softball for four, well, it would be five if you don't count the COVID. Four, if you don't count the COVID, you're the five. Two games you coached count. that year. Um, no, I just talked about them. This is one more the funnest groups I've I've coached, and I mean I've had a lot of good groups between football, wrestling, and of course softball. But it's just seeing them put the work in, um, get to build that. Closest with them because I mean, we're pretty much with them every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're summer, then you get them during school. So, I mean, you're pretty, I mean, you're with them at least 300 something days out of the year. So, I mean, being able to have that bond with them, seeing their triumph and moments, that's that's the rewarding part about coaches, seeing them always succeed. It ain't uh, wins and losses. It's seeing them succeed and, and what they do in life, seeing them succeed in life. That's, uh, that's the more rewarding part of coaching. They had a lot of growth this year, too, going from zero to eight wins, and you return a big bunch of that next year. And I know I can definitely hear just the way you talk about them that you're excited to come back with that group again next year. But unfortunately, things have to come to an end this season, and it's the last one we'll have to do. But you're welcome to join us next week, as always, with Coach Saucman. It feels a little odd. Like there's a big piece missing when you're not on set with us. So we need to have you on there next week. No, never. But, Coach, I appreciate you once again. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. If there's anything else you'd like to say, go ahead. Long record service. There we go. We got it on there a second. I hope he did say it. he'd bring me a hat before Saucman. You need to bring me one, too. <laughs> we'll I asked if he had one in the truck. Saucman. He said, He said, I don't know if I have a five gallon bucket if it's all good. <laughs> Just ask for a bucket hat instead. <laughs> but, Coach, that's all we've got. Thank you all for watching this week's edition of the Malone Director Service Haunt and Sauce Show here from Moss Island. We look forward to seeing you all next week here on Grassroots Media.